Today we'll be looking at the Agio Dark Flash Tracer DT240 radiator performance right here in this video. Now these two fans right here are PWM controlled with a speeds of 600 to 1800 RPMs or revolutions per minute. 200 less compared to most of their competitors but we'll check the performance in a later bit. Now the pump right here can go up to 2600 RPM when it comes to speed. The RGB lighting effect on this setup right here is not addressable. In fact, to power the lighting on the fan or the pump, it requires the same cable that runs the fan or the pump itself. So I hope in the future, there's an addressable version where you can hook it up, an extra pin, hook it up to the motherboard and the motherboard can just sync up with all the lighting effects necessary. When you get this AIO, the turbo paste is pre-applied on the copper plate right here. Though for this testing purposes, we remove it and use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut to see what's the best possible performance that we can get from this setup right here. We will stress test the CPU using IDA64 but disabling the graphic card so it does not introduce unwanted additional heat to the system that may affect the performance of the AIO. We are also using hardware monitor to see the CPU temperature instead of IDA64. We will be testing the AIO in two different ambient temperatures, 25 degrees as well as 35 degrees since I'm literally living in a desert in Malaysia. Nila is a desert, everywhere is construction. But we will be also testing two fan setups in those ambient temperatures, which is the stock fan as well as Noctua NF-A12X25 fans. So I'll be using the Thermotech A500 full tower case spec out with full Noctua fans, six of them at fixed position throughout our four tests. This is the best possible airflow, positive airflow that I can give into the case where the airflow comes from the side, push up all the heat up to the top of the case. Now, aside from that, I also set the fan curve for the AIO and the fans to be at 100% speed at 50 degrees Celsius in the BIOS itself. Starting with the ambient temperature of 25 degrees, we can see the stock fan managed to do 62 degrees at load while the Noctua can do at 58 degrees, a 4 point advantage right here. With the 35 degrees Celsius ambient, the stock fan managed to do 65 degrees versus the Noctua at 62 degrees, a 3 point advantage. So after changing the thermal paste as well as using a full tower case with a lot of Noctua fans, this is the best possible scenario that we can see the true performance of the AIO itself. And from our test, we can find out that even at the hot afternoon with the ambient temperature of 35 degrees, literally I live in the light, it's like a desert. That's why I'm, I sweat a lot, I'm so skinny until today, look at me, look at my arms. So jokes aside, it can cool down the Ryzen 2700X overclocked to 4 gigahertz under 70 degrees. There are not many coolers in the market that can do that easily, especially the cheaper ones. I'm not going to mention the name. So from our test, we can find out one thing when stock fan compare with the Noctua fans, if Agio Dark Flash can use a better static pressure fan that introduce more airflow heating into the radiator, it can dissipate more heat more efficiently. So the product can have room to grow and improve. In fact, I kind of like it. In the future version, I hope to see the RGB effect ad addressable, can be controlled by software, can control by motherboard vendors, and using better fans, I believe the performance can be much better than this. So thank you for watching this video. Comment below what other Agio or Dark Flash product we should review next. Yes, I can try to talk to them. Comment below your opinion, remember like and subscribe and if you're interested in this baby right here, links in the video description where you can get them including the updated price. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next review which I hope is PC case which is coming soon. Yay!